Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to another episode of Starting Astrophotography for Lazy People. And today we're going to talk about a problem that is very often overlooked by beginners, which is back focus. And what is back focus? It's basically the distance that you want to have from the last optical element uh, that's not a filter in your imaging train and your camera sensor. So if we look at this um, telescope here, under the cardboard there, somewhere inside, there's something called a coma reducer or co coma corrector, sorry. And that's a lens that corrects for some of the um, optical aberration of my particular telescope. And from the flange of that lens to the camera sensor, I need to have 55 millimeters of distance. It should not be 54 millimeters. It should not be 56 millimeters. And thou shalt count only to three and not to four. Um, but it's basically a proper distance that you need to be from that optical element to the camera. And most of the time you see that uh, back focus distance is specified with things like focal reducers, uh, for refractors, field flatteners for refractors, uh, re refractors as well, or focal reducers for uh, Schmidt Cassegrains, or coma correctors for Newtonians, or this kind of things. Sometimes for some telescopes that have you know everything integrated, um, it might be like the, the focal reducers. It might be part of the imaging train, and then it tells you like from the uh, focuser of the telescope how much distance you need to have to the camera sensor. In some cases, with some des uh, designs like the uh, Petzval design, uh, like um, in the uh, the William Optics Star 71 and all of its clones, which is something that you know I've always longed to get and never actually uh, gotten, you don't need to be at this precise distance. You need to be within a, th a certain distance, and that makes a big difference. Because let me tell you, getting your back focus accurate to the millimeter, especially when you take into account filters, it gets a bit complicated. Okay, so now the first thing to understand is where from and where to do you measure your back focus distance of how, like that 55 millimeters that I was mentioning, from where to where do I measure it? So if I were to look at the back of a focal reducer, I'd see something like this. I'd have a flat part there and then male threads most of the time on top of that. And in most cases, you measure from the flange, from the shoulder of the focal reducer or coma corrector or whatever, you know, um, a field flattener or whatever optical, uh, let's say, corrector you have in the light path. And so you measure from the flat area here. At least one instance is an exception. The Edge HD uh, focal reducers, at least for the Edge HD 8, I'm not sure about the others, the distance is not measured from the shoulder or from the flange, the flat part there. It's measured from the top of the threads, which makes it a bit more complicated because once you've screwed something inside, well, you don't know where the top of the flanges are, right? So you need to measure the length of those, this, uh, um, a threaded part before you actually screw it, screw it in. So that can be a bit of a problem and it's a bit painful. And so when you're talking about back focus, you can do with just, you know, not knowing the size, uh, not having any measurement tool like this caliper. You can simply, you know, know exactly how long each of the items that you're putting in the light, in the path in the optical path is, and then you don't need to measure anything. But I strongly recommend to get a caliper uh, for measuring everything. And so we start with this, and we need to be at 50, we need to put the sensor. Uh, so the one part, the, the one part we start with is typically the flange, the shoulder of that focal reducer. And then we have a certain distance, which in many cases is 55 millimeters. And by the way, if you use a DSLR, and you bought a T-ring, which is basically an adapter uh, for these uh, threads. So it goes from female M42 threads to uh, the camera uh, mounting mechanism. It is made so that the distance from your sensor to that uh, shoulder, let's say, of your T-ring will be exactly 55 millimeters. And that's why T-rings, depending on the camera, will be much fatter for mirrorless cameras, for example, than they are for DSLRs. 
Uh, that's because 55 millimeters is a very common kind of back focus distance, although it changes. And especially if, when you look at schmidt cassegrain focal reducers, I don't think I have seen any with 55 millimeter back focus distance. I've seen 63, I think, and then depending on the brand, it changes. And then even within a brand, people have measured variability. It gets a bit eh, uh, complicated. Okay, so one side of the measurement. Second side of the measurement is the camera sensor. So if we look in there and I look inside the camera, there is a sensor. Oh yeah, but the sensor is inside the camera. How do I know like how far the sensor is from the flange of the camera here? So I know the distance, the back focus distance that's pretty much eaten up by the camera. Well, uh, I need to look at the specifications of that camera. So if I go on the website of the camera manufacturer, I'll be able to see what is the distance between the sensor and the camera flange. So in the example of ZW cameras, which is what I've been primarily using, uh, the distance between uh, the flange of the camera and the sensor for the smaller sensor, micro four thirds and smaller, uh, is um, 6.5 millimeters. Uh, for the cameras with larger sensors, it's typically 17.5 millimeters. And even the smaller sensor cameras, they come with a ring like that, which is a female to female M42 ring that is 11 millimeters thick. And the 11 millimeters thick means that even with a medium, uh, with a small size sensor ZW camera, you can have a back focus from here to the camera sensor of 11 plus 6.5 of 17.5 millimeters so that you have consistency across the ZW cameras. But you have to know that you can remove that ring to gain back focus because as you noticed, 55 millimeters, it's not a big distance. Or if I go a bit further, if I go to a camera lens, like this Canon lens, the distance from the flange of my Canon lens to my camera sensor has to be 44 millimeters. So I have even less space to play with. And why do you need space to play with? Because you want to put accessories in your light path. And if you bought a color camera, you think like, okay, I can just plug in the color camera in there and I don't have a problem. Well, most of the time, the color camera doesn't come with uh, what is called a UV slash IR filter, which basically prevents star blooming on your sensor. It prevents like kind of bloated kind of images. And um, it is necessary for most cameras to add a filter in the light path. Now that filter, it's just a piece of glass that can be mounted, meaning it comes on a ring with threads. Let me get it. So like this filter there, which is a CLS CCD filter from Optolong, it is mounted and it has, uh, it's a two inch filter. It ha has M48 threads here. So, which is not M42, you might have noticed. So to insert it into an M42 image, in, um, um, image train, which M42 is just for the, the diameter of the threads is 42 millimeters basically. And there's also the pitch of the threads, but I'm not going to get into that right now. Uh, so to use this kind of two inch filter or 48 millimeter uh, filter inside the light path leading to my color camera, I'll need something like uh, this, what is called a filter drawer, where I can, you know, uh, put in the, the filter, draw in, and there's a place where you can actually screw it in. If I manage, it's always a bit painful uh, to do. But basically, it's like made for M48 or two inch filter filters for that particular uh, filter drawer. And then when I have screwed it in, it doesn't fall. I can put it back in the drawer and the drawer has uh, male, female, in this case, M42 threads. So I could, you know, uh, put like this is my focal, the, the focal reducer, let's say, and I can screw my uh, whoops. You, know, you didn't see anything. I can screw. <laughs> Fortunately, it's not a real focal reducer. It's empty. It's, uh, it doesn't have any lens in there. Okay, so I can screw in like on one side and then we have the filter in the light path and then I can keep going to the camera. Okay, uh, but that still means that this particular filter drawer is using up back focus space and we only have 55 millimeters typically to play with. And how thick is that thing? Well, it's 15 millimeters. I can double check 
with a caliper, it's 15.2 millimeters according to this uh, caliper. So that means that I'm losing 15.2 millimeters. So I need to, th to start thinking about things like, okay, if I have my color camera, it's a ZWO camera, and I have this ring on top of it. So that means from the sensor to the flange of that adapter, it's 17.5 millimeters. And this uses 15 millimeters. What else do I need to have in the light pass to reach 55 millimeters? And let me stop you right there, because now you have a filter in the light path. It's no longer 55 millimeters that you want to achieve because the filter itself will fold the light a little bit, you gain a little bit of back focus thanks to the filter. And the rule of thumb, which is what I've read and heard, I have not computed, so I'm just repeating what I've read, is one third of the uh, thickness of the filter. That particular filter is roughly one millimeter thick, so that 0.3 millimeter added to back focus, I want to be 55.3 millimeters from the uh, focal reducer flange, that bird, from the focal reducer flange to the camera sensor. But if I'm using other filters, like the filters in this filter wheel there, this is a filter wheel that can contain multiple filters, and some of my fil filters in there are three millimeters thick. So they will add one millimeter of back focus. So instead of being 55 millimeters away from my coma corrector, I want to be 56 millimeters away from my com coma cor corrector. So those filters have an importance. And yes, I mentioned for color camera, you'd be using a filter drawer, probably like that. There are other solutions. I actually have a video about like a, a nifty way to gain a bit of back focus uh, and still include a two inch filter within um, an M42 imaging train. I'm linking to it uh, above right now. And uh, the filter wheel itself is when you have a monochrome camera typically and you have multiple filters that you want to use and you can rotate through the filters and the filter wheel here is controlled by USB and powered by a USB actually. So it just will rotate the filters and my computer can tell uh, the, the filter wheel which filter it should be using for what imaging task. Um, so which makes filter wheels very convenient for uh, monochrome uh, imaging. But this filter wheel, if I measure it, it's a filter wheel from ZW. Oh wow! It's exactly 20 millimeters thick. So that means I'm losing 20 millimeters of back focus. So again, I can think like, okay, if I have the camera with this plus the filter wheel, that will be like, what, 20 plus 17.5. So we're at 37.5. And you know, how much do I need to get to 55? So what should I add in my imaging train to reach exactly those 55 or actually even with my filters, 56 millimeters. So that's something to keep in mind. And you, you have to think also if you're going to use other accessories in the light path, like an off-axis off guider, which I do not recommend unless you're using a schmidt cassegrain uh, type of telescope or a telescope with a movable mirror for focusing, then you need to think about like, can you actually put that uh, off-axis guider within the back focus distance? At the same time, for, uh, for off-axis guiders, you'll have to wonder whether the distance from the off-axis guider to the camera and from the off-axis guider prism to the guide camera will be okay so that the guide camera can reach focus. So it gets really complicated and that's why I don't recommend them at first. Um, now talking about filters, there's another thing that comes with using filters. It's the size of the filter relative to the size of the camera sensor because light rays within that imaging train that I have here, they come in at an angle. And if there are any obstacles in that path, the light will be cut off that angle. So if you have filters that are too small and they cut off a bit of your light path, you will lose some light. And if you lose, uh, if your filters are small enough, they might actually affect the sensor. Maybe they will cast the, the, the part of the filter that is basically blocking the light so outside of the filter will cast a shadow on your sensor. This is something that can happen and it's called vignetting using filters. And there are ways that you can actually compute how big your filter should be f to avoid vignetting. And I have a video on that topic as well, which I recommend you watch because that comes into your selection of filter, whether it's for a monochrome camera or for um, a color camera. 
well, you'll, where you'll typically need at least a UV slash IR uh, filter. So things are already quite complicated, right? But you know what you need to insert in your light path and you know the distance you need to achieve. Now, how do you finally achieve that distance very precisely? Well, there's multiple ways. One of the most popular ways is to use a kit like that, which I bought on AliExpress, I think, which has multiple, basically, what, uh, like m42 adapters this one is nine millimeters thick it's m42 female to m42 male so i can insert it in my light path very easily and then i have a second one which is eight millimeters and then i have a third one which is seven millimeters and then i have another one which i think will be uh six millimeters and then we have five millimeters and then we have four millimeters right so using those rings judiciously i can really adjust my distance from the flange of my focal reducer or of my coma cor cor corrector or if using an edge, edge hd uh, scope it would be from the top of the threads of my uh, re focal reducer to my camera using this kind of uh, set of m42 kind of rings that have different distances and using them judiciously while keeping as much as possible my filter close to the camera to avoid vignetting. If you've watched the video I pointed to, uh, you'll understand why that is important to keep your filters as close as possible to the camera sensor, especially if your filters are small. Um, the filters themselves, by the way, if you're going to use a filter wheel, it gets more complicated because you have tons of choices of size of filters, like 1.25 inch mounted filters, 31 millimeters unmounted filters, meaning you don't have like threads, you just have a piece of round glass without anything else. Um, or like 36 millimeters uh, unmounted filter, you have things like 50 millimeters square filters, especially can be useful for full, full, full frame cameras. But at first I wouldn't recommend full frame cameras because things get so complicated with them. Another way that I have to uh, basically change the distance from my camera sensor to my coma corrector or focal reducer or whatever are small plastic rings like this, which again I bought on uh, AliExpress like this kind of stuff. And each has a, a given thickness. So this one is one millimeter thick. This one is 0 0.5 millimeters thick. This one is not specified, uh, this kind of stuff. So this helps reach exactly the proper back focus distance. And there are ways after you have, so when you're buying your camera, you're buying your telescope, you're buying your focal reducer, if you need one, you're buying your filter or your filters for your camera you want to check with uh, the shop that you're buying from, like how will you achieve the proper back focus distance and think about that. You know, don't rely just on the shop, check the specs for the camera, check the specs for a filter wheel if you're using, if you're gonna use one, check the specs for a filter drawer if you're gonna use one, check how you're gonna insert your filters into the light path, uh, check what else you want to put in the light path and check whether everything will fit within those 55 millimeters, maybe 63 millimeters for a Canon lens, it would be 44 millimeters, all that kind of stuff. So you can see it gets complicated, but it's very important to think about that when you're getting your equipment. Otherwise you'll, uh, you'll be left disappointed because you cannot get the right distance between the sensor and the last optical uh, element besides the filter in your uh, light path, in your um, telescope basically. And using all of those tricks, you can achieve the right distance. Now there is something else with those rings there and with those um, M42 kind of rings here is that they not only increase the uh, distance to, uh, from the camera sensor to the, uh, to the coma corrector or focal reducer or field flattener or whatever, they also uh, change the rotation of the camera because you're, you're using threads and everything is rigidly connected, you can use such rings to affect the rotation of the camera so that the sensor of the camera, you can change its uh, angle compared to the telescope and thus compared to your actual target. And this is important if you want to frame your objects judiciously, especially if you have a non-square sensor. So most cameras don't have a square sensor, even for a square sensor, it's relevant. You may have a very wide target, like l narrow and long targets. And maybe because of that, you want to rotate your camera so that your field of view is going like from corner to corner, like across 
like the diagonal, the object will be across the diagonal of your sensor, so you can capture the whole object at once. That's a very valid use case. So if you're taking a mosaic of a certain region, you want to match a certain rotation angle to get that mosaic in the most you know, relevant way. And when you have something that's rigid, like I have here, it is not easy to actually change the angle of the camera. For me, my coma corrector within the draw tube there has a system by which I can actually rotate the coma corrector along with the whole imaging train. So I have a solution for that. Um, for my camera lens and color camera setup, I can rotate the whole assembly because I have rings that uh, I hold the camera with rather than a dovetail directly. So I can rotate the whole setup to achieve that. Uh, but for many of the setups, you cannot do that very easily. Maybe you have uh, an off-axis guider with a rotator. Maybe you have a specific element in the light path that allows you to rotate your whole imaging train, and many manufacturers uh, provide such an element. I've never bought one of those, so I cannot comment. Uh, the Celestron off-axis guider, which while it eats, it eats up a lot of back focus, it, you can actually rotate it and rotate the camera using it, so it's very uh, useful. And another thing is using this kind of ring to, uh, to put a bit of distance between the threads and so the camera when you screw it in will not stop exactly at the same thread as it had before and so it will be rotated. So these rings can be used to rotate the camera as well. However, sometimes they're a bit uneven so you introduce tilt in the system and tilt might affect, will affect actually the a shape of your stars and it might be you know a problem to you so you might want to do some counter tilt using a tilt adapter that kind of stuff and again it gets a bit complicated especially since a tilt adapter uh, would also eat up a bit of uh, uh, focal uh, of back focus distance that is very precious to you so yeah all those things could to consider it's it's hard but you know, if you get the equipment from the get-go, like this kind of stuff, if you st you've, you already know how you're going to achieve that back focus distance, you know everything becomes easier. And to their credit, most camera manufacturers and many telescope manufacturers give you very detailed diagrams of how to achieve a variety of back focus distances using a variety of accessories typically accessories that they also sell, uh, of course, uh, but at least they give you a guide on how to achieve that. So that can be very useful and I strongly recommend checking them out so that you are educated and you know what you're talking about when you're doing, going to do your purchase of telescope and camera. And I think I've gone on long enough. That's it for back focus distances. Uh, the effect Actually, one more thing. The effect of back focus is the star shapes and the flatness of your field. If you're too far away or too close, your star shapes, especially at the corner of the image, will start freaking out and it's not going to make for a pleasing image. So you want really to achieve a proper back focus distance. That's uh, quite important and maybe I should have started this video by saying that but that is really a very important point of this whole madness that we're having with reaching the exact uh, back focus distance so yes again that's pretty much it uh, so i hope this was useful if this was uh, useful please click the like button please also subscribe and click on the notification uh, bell ding uh, so that you're notified when uh, the new episode in this series will uh, come up uh, thank you so much uh, for watching um, also, feel free to leave a comment down below if there's anything you know wrong that I said or you want to correct me about something. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, whenever you can, to look up at the cloud stars. And I'll see you next time.